Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of The World Today, where we bring you the latest news updates from around the world. I'm Ham Morsi, and I'm joined this afternoon with Mr. Abdel Latif a journalist. Good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon. Let's start off with our first news item from Al Ahram Online that reads Renaissance Dam study contracts to be signed with two French firms in February, Egypt's foreign ministry says. The news item itself reads, contracts with the two French firms carrying out studies on the impact of uh, Ethiopia's uh, under construction Grand Renaissance Dam on downstream countries. Water share will be signed in early February in Khartoum. A spokesperson for Egypt's foreign ministry said on Sunday, Ahmad Abu Zaid's comments at the press, uh, to the press rather, came ahead of the technical meeting between the tripartite committee comprised of representatives from Egypt, Ethiopia and Sudan in Addis Ababa on Wednesday and Thursday. It has yet to be decided whether the February meeting will be attended by the irrigation ministers of Egypt, Ethiopia and Sudan only, or if the foreign ministers will also attend, Abu Zaid added. And a series of technical meetings will be held between the tripartite countries in January, according to the spokesman. The meeting in Addis Ababa this week will tackle technical suggestions made by Egypt. At the end of January, the tripartite committee will then convene in Cairo to study the offers made by the two French firms. Dutch uh, firm Deltras, uh, which has signed a 30% of the work, withdrew in September, saying the circumstances did not guarantee an independent study. Egypt had negotiated with uh, Ethiopia over the choice of an independent firm to conduct the studies before the agreement was reached at the end of December in the second French consultancy firm, Aritalia. Um, what, what do you think of this? Why, why are things so difficult to find a firm? Yeah, of course, uh, I think uh, this will be uh, the final uh, uh, round of negotiations between uh, between the th three countries, uh, Ethiopia, Egypt, mm. uh, and Sudan. As you know, they agreed on some um, uh, disputed issues uh, in uh, their last meeting. I think this uh, the other meeting will uh, be held uh, and will be attended by uh, ministers of irrigation in, in three countries, uh, waiting for the uh, the French uh, uh, office. Uh, uh, that will uh, present uh, a full study uh, about uh, the dam itself. Uh, so, uh, uh, as you know, at uh, the same time so that uh, Egypt's situation is uh, clear, um, uh, they didn't oppose uh, uh, the, the, the dam as a utility for, um, for uh, generating power and electricity and so on, uh, but at the same time it mustn't uh, uh, affect uh, Egypt um, uh, assets of waters or, or uh, the, uh, this is the, 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 the main point of uh, the negotiations between uh, Egypt and Ethiopia and at the same time I think Egypt re recommended uh, to, um, uh, to open more water doors in the dam itself uh, because it, uh, as you know that uh, uh, it will um, take maybe uh, uh, one year to five years uh, to fall of the dam of the the water uh, uh, demanded for generating powers. Yes. I think uh, um, this will be the final uh, round of negotiations between the three party countries. But is it prolonging the procedures of finding some sort of middle ground in our favor? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, as you know that uh, Egypt want to take all the, um, uh, the conditions that uh, uh, the water uh, as a country uh, for um, uh, downstream uh, downstream country for the uh, for the river nine will be affected uh, anymore uh, by the dam itself this is the main issues and as you know that uh, Egypt is still also um, uh, want to uh, to assure its rights in using the uh, the uh, some articles in the last uh, agreement uh, signed uh, in the last centuries and so on that it has the right to a veto for any um, uh, project uh, on the dam and also uh, to uh, if 
any other countries want to, to make anything yes. uh, on the river itself, it must uh, inform Egypt, uh, and Egypt, uh, of course, uh, will let uh, for uh, the uh, countries, uh, but I think this is uh, the main issue uh, just now, as uh, Ethiopia wanted to scrap all uh, the old uh, agreement uh, yes. signed uh, be, um, during the occupation area and so on. Okay, let's move on to the next item from the Daily Star of Lebanon that reads, Daesh clashes with guards near Libya's uh, Sadr oil port. The news item itself reads, uh, um, Daesh militants clashed with a force guarding Libya's Assad oil port and fighting continued near the major export terminal, witnesses and troops said. No official was available to comment on the attacks or details of how close the uh, fighting was to the port, but ISIS uh, tried to uh, attack Assad once before in October last year, uh, setting off a car bomb and raiding a perimeter gate. Uh, a uh, nearby Ras Lunaf oil ports uh, have been closed for more than a year after fighting between rival factions for the control of the country, where Daesh has gained control in the turmoil since the 2000 fall of Muammar Gaddafi. Sadr is protected by Ibrahim Jathran, a petrol facility guard, a federalist armed faction. Daesh controls the city of Sirte and has slowly expanded its presence in the North African state. The fighters uh, have attacked several oil feeds in the south of Libya, but has so far not managed to control any oil installations as it has done in Syria. H how, how do you see this uh, incident uh, in terms of Daesh control in Libya? Uh, as you know that uh, after uh, they reached the uh, agreement in Sukhairat uh, conventions and yes. so on uh, between uh, the east and the and the west and yes. so on and uh, a national uh, unity uh, cabinet or yes. government uh, I think that uh, uh, some now especially who didn't accept the the the, the agreement itself yes. uh, tried with uh, or uh, w with uh, some members of Daesh and so on uh, to escalate the situations. I think they uh, they uh, they didn't want the the two parties uh, in Libya uh, to reach a final solution, to reach a final agreement between uh, between themselves, uh, and also to implement all the articles. Uh, uh, that issued in uh, Sukhairat. Uh, now, um, I think that uh, uh, the uh, the National Assembly in uh, in East uh, is trying uh, to do its effort uh, to form uh, the National Unity uh, Cabinet and also uh, to see how to deal with the w with the militia and so on. Uh, this is uh, the heart of the matter just now. Um, so, does the Unity government itself mean that, that at some point these factions or these extremist groups will be able to be under control eventually? Uh, yeah, uh, they, they declared that uh, the unity go uh, government will be formed uh, from all the political parties attended in, uh, in, uh, in Sukhairat and they signed the Sukhairat uh, agreement. Uh, so uh, they must declare now, I mean all the, uh, the political parties in Libya, they yes. must declare, the, uh, 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 declare uh, now that, that uh, they didn't support the other uh, uh, militia uh, groups uh, and so on in Libya. Uh, this, of course, is uh, to reach for forming the national uh, unity government. Okay, let's move on to the World Bulletin that reads, Thousand Mourn Slain Palestinians in Ramallah. The uh, news item itself reads, Thousands of Palestinians attend a funeral on Sunday. Two young men who were recently killed by Israeli security forces and whose bodies were temporarily held by the Israeli authorities. Um, the uh, mourners marched from Ramallah Medical Center to the town of Silwad, northeast of Ramallah, which, uh, the two sl from which the two slain men are. Anas Hamad, who is 21, and Muhammad Ayyad, 20, hailed. On Friday, the Israeli authorities handed over the bodies of 23 slain Palestinians from the occupied West Bank to the Palestinian Health Ministry. All 23 had been killed by Israeli security forces during the ongoing spat of violence that claimed at least 144 Palestinian lives since October 1st. On Saturday, the West Bank city of Hebron, tens of thousands of Palestinians attended the funeral of uh, 17 of the Palestinians whose bodies were returned. Meanwhile, the bodies of 16 slain Palestinians, all of whom hailed from occupied East Jerusalem, 
are still being held by the Israeli authorities, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. The Israeli Information Center for Human Rights in the Occupied Territories, for its part, criticized the Israeli government's policy of temporarily holding the bodies of Palestinians gunned down by security forces. Why is the Israeli uh, government holding on to these bodies? Um, uh, as you know, for, uh, after uh, they assassinated, uh, they, they attacked the Palestinian and mm. so on, uh, as you know, if they delivered uh, the bodies uh, once uh, to, the, uh, to their families and mm -hmm. so on, uh, I think the, they uh, may um, face uh, some uh, protest and, uh, and so on, or um, uh, an attack against uh, the Israeli targets and so on. Uh, but I think that uh, Israel cabinet discovered after that uh, they must uh, deliver the body for their uh, families, especially, um, as you know, that uh, they have more uh, Threats just now yes. all over the borders in uh, from uh, Daesh uh, in Syria and also uh, from uh, some members of uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon and so on. Uh, and uh, in this uh, moment, I think that. Uh, uh, some escalations uh, happened just now between the Israel and the, some members from uh, uh, Hezbollah. Uh, they uh, plowed uh, just uh, a military vehicle for uh, Israel on Mazar uh, al-Sheba. This is, of course, uh, uh, declared that uh, Israel uh, diversified its uh, uh, or uh, um, uh, the, their, uh, as they think, I mean, uh, the Israeli cabinet, uh, their enemies, they provoke the Palestinians, uh, they provoke uh, at the same time uh, Hezbollah in uh, Lebanon and so on, especially after uh, the Israeli assassinations for Samir uh, Kuntar. But holding on to these bodies, wouldn't it make the problem worse? As, as we see here, that basically there were, there were thousands going to the funeral and probably protesting uh, over... Uh, but but the, uh, they wanted for the, uh, for the first, uh, uh, from uh, this, uh, uh, from this situation, uh, to uh, suffocate all the uh, protests of the Israeli families against them. Yes, and, and what about the idea of human rights? Obviously... This is uh, against every form of human rights. Why isn't the international community interfering in, in this? Uh, the international community is speaking about uh, the, uh, the Israelis uh, mm -hmm. only. Uh, but if Israel, as you know, uh, committed in uh, all, uh, as, as usual, uh, committed in aggressions or assassinations and so on mm -hmm. uh, against the Palestinian, no one mentioned uh, this in the international community, especially human uh, rights organizations uh, and also a minister uh, international organization they mentioned uh, only uh, what they can consider uh, some attacks uh, in some Arab countries like uh, Palestine like Egypt like and so on okay let's move on to the next item from the Guardian that reads uh, Saudi Arabia cuts diplomatic ties with Iran after execution of a cleric the uh, news item itself reads uh, Riyadh gives Iranian diplomats 48 hours to leave after days uh, two days of a protest and the burning of a Saudi embassy in Tehran uh, following the death of the Shiite cleric uh, Sheikh Nimr and Nimr Saudi Arabia has uh, cut diplomatic relations with Iran in a sharp escalation of tensions between the two regional foes following the execution of the Saudi Shiite cleric uh, Sheikh Nimr and Nimr. <laughs> the Saudi Foreign Minister Ayadil al Jubar told a news conference that Iran's diplomatic mission and related entities in Saudi Arabia had been given 48 hours to leave. He said Riyadh would not allow the Islamic Republic to undermine the Sunni Kingdom's security. The move on Sunday evening came after two days of outrage from among Shiite communities across the Middle East. South Asia at the death of a Nimr, a prominent critic of Saudi and Bahraini monarchies, whose cause uh, as a prisoner since 2012 have been championed by Tehran and the United Nations. It signals a further hardening of Riyadh's position towards Iran, with which it is locked in a bitter battle for regional influence. Iran's foreign ministry accused Saudi Arabia of stoking regional tensions. A spokesman said Saudi Arabia sees not only in its interests but also its existence in pursuing crisis and a confrontation and attempts to resolve its internal problems by exporting them to the outside. Hossein Amir Abdullah, uh, Iran's uh, deputy foreign minister on Sunday, said that by cutting diplomatic ties, Riyadh could make its major mistake of executing Sheikh Nair. Um, how do you see this incident? Obviously, th this is a major problem, uh, or a diplomatic problem now, not just an internal problem. Uh, 
uh, diplomatic problems and not only for uh, Saudi Arabia but also mm -hmm. for uh, the Gulf countries as you know that uh, the Gulf council uh, I mean the countries uh, the, the Gulf countries uh, must uh, at the same time they support uh, Saudi Arabia especially they suffered all the Gulf uh, countries uh, I mean, uh, like uh, Bahrain, like uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, Saudi Arabia, and the Yemen itself, yes. uh, they suffered from uh, the Iranian um, interventions in their affairs.